Now, if I'm trying to find what Q2 is, right, I will be given my probability density function. Um, I'll be given boundaries, like what's your shortest person, what's your tallest person, and then I can use either of these integrals to then work out Q2. Can I give you an example? Yeah? Um, I need, sorry, bear with me. We're going to do, I had to make up an example because I couldn't find, I couldn't find a good one. Okay, so, <clears throat> I'm going to give you guys a probability density function, like so, and what we're going to do is find the median, okay, that's what we're going to try and find. So here is our function, and we want to try and find Q2, okay? We're going to try and find the median, okay? How are we going to do this? Alright, now, um, think about what this means, by the way. Um, you don't have to do this, and you might feel like, oh, this is a bit time-consuming to do it, but I'm just going to give you a rough sketch of what this looks like, and I encourage you to follow along with me, right? If I were to think about what is the shape of this probability density function, 1 minus x on 2, um, what is this graph? Is it a parabola? Is it a log? What is it? It's just linear, isn't it? It's just a straight line. What can you tell me about this straight line? It's, um, it cuts through at half. It cuts through it, wait. Cuts x through at, at x equals a half, at y equals a half? Where's, where's it cut? Okay, so uh, it, at y equals to 1. Ah, good. So uh, this is actually my y-intercept here, right? y equals 1. So I'm just going to pop 1 in there, right? And then, yeah, the gradient is what? It's, it's negative? Is it steep? Is it, is it shallow? What is it? It's, it's downwards and the gradient's... A half, right? So it's pretty shallow. So, would you want to draw with me? This is what I'm getting, right? Do you agree with that? Mm -hmm. um, what is this point over here, by the way? The end point. This end point here, what is it? What is the x-intercept? Oh. It's 2, isn't it? Very good, okay? So the x-intercept is 2. Now look at this. This is just a triangle, yeah? Um, it has a height of 1. It has a base of 2. So what's its area? Base times height on 2. That's equal to 1, right? It had better equal to 1 because what is this thing supposed to represent? 1. It's a probability density function. Are you so far so good? Okay. So what I'm trying to find is there's some value in here, Q2, that will break this. This triangle has a total area of 1. I'm trying to find the value that breaks it into 50-50. Do you agree? I'm just going to kind of eyeball that. Like, it can't be at halfway. Do you agree? Because like then this triangle will clearly be smaller than this. So I think it has to be a little bit this way. I don't, I don't know what exact value so it is, but I think it's somewhere around there. I thought you would cut it somewhere so it becomes like a square or something. Ah, uh, now here's the thing, right? Like in terms of what shapes I can cut this into, all I've got is vertical lines that I can use, right? So this, this value here is going to have to correspond to go up and then divide into two sections, right? Like your taller half of the class and your shorter half or whichever it might be. So this is what we're trying to find. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Now, um, I've got two tools in my toolbox for finding the median. An integral from my lower boundary to the median and an integral from the median to the upper boundary. In this situation, have a look at what my boundaries are. Which do you think is easier to work with? Um, lower boundary or upper boundary? The, low, lower. the lower boundary. I agree with Serene. Why is the lower boundary an easier one to use in this case? <laughs> it's a triangle, not a trapezium. That is true. Have a think about the values that have given us that triangle. Ashani, what are you seeing? Um, the, lower is zero, so the lower boundary is zero. See that? I love integrating and substituting zero in because a lot of the time it just my terms just disappear. So it's just easier working for me. Um, I will leave it for you to have a go. You can you'll still get the same answer if you try the other one. You'll just have a bit more work to do. Okay. So let's try this out, shall we? I am going to now form that integral over there for this particular function. So I'm going to say since Q2 is the median. Here's me introducing what my notation is, right? The integral from the lower boundary, which we just established is, help me out guys, lower boundary is zero, okay? Up to, so I'm going from zero all the way over to my median, Q2 in this case. I don't know what its value is. Okay. It's going to be of this function. This is my probability density function with respect to x. I know what this should equal to. It should give me 
half of the people, or, or half of the scores. I don't even know what this probability density function represents. So it's going to equal a half. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So now I've set up the, the goals. I need to integrate now, yeah? So can you help me work out what the primitive should be? x minus x squared on 4. Very nice. There we go. Nailed it. 1 turns into x. Um, increase my power and divided by that new power. Everything looks good. I go from naught to this Q2 business. And then that equals a half. So far, so good? Yep. OK. I've got, I've got my integration already done, so now I'm going to substitute in my two boundaries, yeah? So here comes my upper boundary. Um, it's going to be q2 minus q2 squared on 4. Is that just a straight substitution? I'm like, I don't know what this q2 is, but I will work out what it is in a second. And then I subtract my lower boundary. Zero. Aha, this is why we chose it, right? Um, zero minus zero squared on 4, it's just zero, equals a half. So far, so good. Um, it looks a bit weird, because, but we can, we can work with this, yeah. So then you take the 4 to the other side. Ah, okay, so yeah, I've, I've got fractions here that I want to deal with, right? Now, the easiest way that I think of to deal with fractions is to multiply everything, left and right hand side, by some constant that will get rid of all the fractions in one hit. What's the smallest number I can choose? Mm -hmm. If I multiply by 2, I'll get rid of this fraction, but I won't get rid of this one, will I? No. Like, it'll still be q squared, q2 squared on 2. So I should multiply by 4, right? And you would choose whatever number based on what terms you have here. If I multiply through by 4, I get 4q2 minus what? q2 squared, median squared, equals what on the right-hand side? Think, what did I multiply everything by? So you get 4 and 2, so just 2. I got 4 and 2, which is, which is 2. Fantastic. OK, now, this is a bit weird and awkward. This is a quadratic, though, and I know how to deal with quadratics. They could be quadratics in x, or t, or u, or in this case, the median. Okay? So um, what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to try and get everything on one side. Is that OK? That seems like a usual tactic that I use. Um, I will add q2 squared, median squared. I'll subtract four lots of the median. And then there's that plus two that was hanging around there in the beginning. Have a look at this. Hmm. What's this thing equal to? How do I solve this quadratic? Can I factorize it? Hmm. I'm searching for a pair of numbers. It adds to negative 4, multiplies to 2. The only whole numbers I know that multiply to 2 are 1 and 2, right? What if you take out 2 from the whole thing? OK, so stop for a second. Um, I've got a bunch of different ways to handle quadratics, right? I tried to factorize. I don't know about you, but no numbers are leaping to my head. So then what do I do instead of factorizing? Well, I can't factorize. You, don't just complete you can complete the square. Or we can automate that process by doing the, for the quadratic formula, oh, right? I was, I was hoping you could. <laughs> now, I know you're like, oh, I, really, I didn't want to do that. OK, but I, I don't know how else. So let's give this a go. Come on, help me out, guys. All right. Shh, shh, shh. Stay with me. We, got, we can work this out. Like the quadratic formula, I know we haven't done it for a while, but we actually got pretty good at it, right? So I'm going to say, I'm going to start it over here because I'm going to need more work, right? Q2 equals 1 minus B, which in this case, what is B? Look carefully. What's minus B? B is, B is negative 4, right? So minus negative 4 is 4. Do you agree with that? There's minus B. Plus or minus the square root of B squared, which in this case is? 16, because that's negative 4 squared. Take away 4 AC. What's AC in this case? 1 times 2, right? So that's, that's 2. Uh, all divided by? 2a, which in this case is just 2. Okay, stay with me, stay with me. We can do this, okay? What comes in underneath the square root sign? It's 16 minus 8, which is 8. All on 2. I can go one better than this. Um, there's a square number I can pull out of this, right? What's the biggest square you can factorize out of that? The biggest square number I can pull out is 4. So I'm going to pull out square root of 4, which you guys all know is 2. So I'm getting this on 2. And now I've got a common denominator on the top and the bottom, namely 2. So what happens when I divide through? Sean? I have a question. Sir. Oh, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Can we factorize the top by 2 and then cancel the? You absolutely can. So let's factorize the top by 2. That leaves me with what on the top? 2. 2 plus or minus root. Ah, uh, Careful, careful. 
That's the 2 we factorized out. So it's still a root 2 that's left. Is that okay? That's divided by 2. Cancel, cancel. Now I have answers. Now, hold on a second. You get two answers. I got two answers because I got a quadratic, right? That's kind of, you know, fair enough. But, but I'm not supposed to have two medians, right? Like that's the thing I'm trying to work out. So hopefully I can reason my way through showing that one of these values is no good. Have a think. Hmm. You've got all the information on the board. Also, yeah. One of these doesn't work, but which one is it? Can't can't have a minus? Like there's this guy, and then there's this guy. Hmm. What are you um hold on, one at a time. Ashan, what are you thinking? So when you put when you put two plus root two, you get three point four, which is out of our domain. Ah three point four is outside of our domain, which of course it should be because you're like, wait a second, after two, this probability density function, it just borrows into the ground. You're not allowed to do that, right? And that's why the domain restriction was there. So even though like, we're so used to saying, oh, negatives, get rid of those guys, right? In fact, the negative is the one that works. It's the positive that goes outside the domain of our probability density function. Are you with me? Okay. So how, how do I capture that, right? I'm going to say but. But um, I have a restriction on x, right? I had it from the first line of my question, right? Therefore, x can't possibly be 2 plus root 2. So therefore, it has to be the other one. q2 must equal 2 minus root 2. Now, root 2 is about 1.4. So if you do... 2 minus that, you're going to get something like 0.6. Uh, you go ahead and get the actual value. Does that match with that intuition of what we expected? It's about here, right? That was a 